Every believer has a voice, and it's the voice of victory. My God has made the way for me. Open your Bibles for this message tonight. First of all, in the book of James, chapter 2. James chapter 2, begin reading with the 14th verse. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he has faith and has not works? Can faith save him? Now, the Weymouth translation of the New Testament, it was, it was originally called the New Testament in modern English. <clears throat> it was out of print, so KCM put it back in print. So it's, it's KCM publication now. You've heard me use this phrase. Well, that's where I got it. What does it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and has not action? Can faith save him? Has not corresponding action. If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, Depart in peace, be ye warmed and filled, notwithstanding, you give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Even so, faith, if it has not corresponding action, it is dead being alone. Corresponding action. That, that clears it up, doesn't it? Now, people many years ago got confused with works and got, got you know, kind of bent out of shape, but it, that's, that's not really what he was saying. It's, it's action that corresponds to what you believe in your heart and say with your mouth. For instance, a woman with the issue of blood believed it in her heart. She said it and she got out there and did it. That's corresponding action to what she believed and what she said. Now, this is the way faith works. Now, that corresponding action, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> doesn't necessarily have to be after the fact. It can be before. Now, go to, the, go, go to Mark's Gospel, chapter 5. Mark, chapter 5, the great faith chapter. In fact, Jairus, leader of the synagogue that the, that the centurion built, same centurion that recognized Jesus as a prophet and authority, same centurion at the crucifixion, and said, this must have been the Son of God. I thought he was just a prophet, but he's the Son of God. And then we found out who he was, and he lived at Caesarea. His name's Cornelius. He was the Caesarea, he, he, was the, he, he was the centurion of that whole district. And Caesarea is right there where Pilate's headquarters was. And you remember Pilate, uh, uh, check the, with the centurion and see that he's really already dead. So this was the, uh, of the Italian band and was, com and was commander of that whole area. Well, and, and all of this is right here in this fifth chapter. It's, it's an amazing, uh, anyway. Verse one, they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarenes. And he was come out of the ship immediately. Immediately there met him out of the tombs, a man with an un clean spirit. Now in the sixth chapter of the book of Ephesians, the apostle Paul gives us the rank and file of Satan's command from the lowest to the highest. Principalities, powers, rulers, 
of the darkness of this world. Those are the ones that possess people. Now, a demon-possessed person is someone that that demon controls them, spirit and soul and body completely. That's demon possession. That's not oppression. That's demon possession. And you haven't seen many. I have. You haven't seen many. There's not many in this country. Because of the gospel that's preached in this country. And you'll see something about that right here in this chapter. Very interesting. <clears throat> now, look at it again. A man with an unclean spirit, one spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the shackles broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. Now, notice this. Um, if you'll permit me to use this for ex ex explanation purposes, this is Samson in reverse. The power of God would come on Samson. It's obvious that Samson was not a big, strong-looking man because they couldn't figure out what made him so strong. But the power of God would come on him, and you couldn't bind him. The power of the devil came on this man because he's skin and bones. Doesn't sleep. He's a cutter. But that, that, that demon was the one breaking the chains and the shackles. No man could tame him. Now that's extremely important information, not only in this case, but this, there, there's information in this chapter that explains a lot of things. And you'll understand a lot that's going on today by what you learn here. Now then, always. Now, always means always. Day and night. So he didn't sleep. He was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. He's a cutter. Now, there are people that do this today, that cut themselves, try, trying to get some kind of release, cutting themselves, cut, cutting themselves. Well, you can be delivered from that. That is a spirit. I didn't say you're possessed. Could possibly be that you are. But if you're possessed, that means spirit, soul, and body. You could be a cutter and not be possessed. Just obsessed. The same way that you can, you can be obsessed and a lot of pressure put on you by the devil. And be a born again believer. You say something long enough for it to get into your heart, it'll control your life. I want you to see something else about this. Cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, Say afar off. afar off. He saw him afar off. And he ran and worshiped him. If there could ever have been a person that the devil had complete control of and could have stopped him from worshiping God, it would have been this man 
but he had no control over him. And the minute he saw Jesus, he lost his deal right there. He ran and he worshiped him. The devil's still in him. And he ran and worshiped him. Now notice this. Now I have been in the presence and been talked to by demon-possessed people. So I'm, I'm going to attempt to use the same kind of voice that I heard. And particularly, well, yeah, particularly two incidents, and then I'll tell you about a third one. And cried with a loud voice, What am I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God, you torment me not. For he had said, Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. And he asked, what is thy name? And he answered, My name is Legion, for we are many. And don't send me away out of this country. Now that's amazing, isn't it? His assignment was right there. Don't send me away out of this country. Now there was nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine that we may enter into them. Now everybody there heard what this devil said through the man. Jesus heard all of these other devils, from three to six thousand of them. Now that ruler was in charge of the three to 6,000. There was only one spirit that possessed him, and all of those others were coming and going. So, all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. Forthwith, Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine. They look for a body. They have to have a body to express themselves. Their first choice is a human body. If they can't get a human body, they'll take a pig. They'll take anything they can get their hands on to keep from having to go to the dry place and seek rest and find none. Well, that didn't do them any good because all the pigs drowned. They that fed the swine fled and told it in the city and in the country, and they went out to see that that was done. They came to Jesus and see him that was possessed with the devil and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Where did the clothes come from? Huh? Where did the clothes come from? Jesus was prepared. He already knew what he was going to do. He took the clothes with him. He prepared ahead of time. Faith always prepares for what it believes and praises that will come to pass. Preparing for it. Sweep out the garage for the new car. Clean up the old car. Quit calling it a clunker. Don't call it a piece of trash. It's the only car you have, darling. Clean it up. <laughs> Polish the ugly thing. Yeah. Clean it up. I can just see Jesus. 
Because now look, listen to what he said. Clothed and in his right mind, and they saw that it that told them how it befell him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine, they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. Get out of here, please. And when he was coming to the ship, he had been possessed with the devil, prayed him that he might be with him. I want to go with you, Jesus. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but said unto him, Go home to your friends and tell them how great things the Lord has done for thee and has had compassion on thee. Go home and preach love. Yeah. He departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for them and all men did marvel. Now you check it out. This man caused them, he changed, this man changed that whole area right there. And when Jesus came back, they rushed to him. I, can't you see him? Jesus called the guys together. He said, now look, I want you to go get some nice clothes. I'm going to call this man to preach. And he, right now he looks nasty. I mean, he, he's, he's naked. He doesn't even have any clothes and he's skin and bones. But he's going to be a new man. I'm going to call him to preach. And he's going to go back home to his friends. And I'm just thinking that they probably don't even know what happened to him. They maybe thought maybe he's dead. If they were to see him, they wouldn't recognize him. But he's going to go back home in nice clothes and he's going to hit the road preaching, brother, talking about this man, Jesus, that came to him. And he'll be like me. He'll say, do you like my new suit? <laughs> Yes, man, because he, Jesus called a man to preach. Thank you, Lord. This right here is just so moving to me that Jesus already had that planned out. He knew what he was going to do. It's like it was with Philip. He knew what he was going to do with Philip. He did all of that on purpose because for some reason, uh, it, it, he, he knew something in Philip that needed to be changed and that this did it. He already knew. And he already knew this man in the spirit. Knew he was going to call him to preach. So he took his new clothes for him. Now that's very, very important. Jesus was prepared for him. And, and you know, you already saw it. This man didn't want to do anything but be with him because for the first time he remembered who he was. He remembered who his friends are. He remembered where his home is. His mind is in back again. And now he's a love preacher. Now faith's motive is always love. Faith's motive is always love. I want to read you something in the classic Amplified. From Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1. Now the Greek word, now let me, let me turn over there in the King James because it, it, it's very, you, 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 you have to study to get this out of what the, the King James says about it. Be ye therefore followers of God. That doesn't say it. But the Greek word translated follower is M-I-M-E-T-E-S, mimic. Be therefore imitators of God. Copy Him. Follow His example as well, beloved children. Imitate their Father and walk in love. Walk in love. 
esteeming and delighting in one another as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us, a slain offering and sacrifice to God for you so that it became a sweet fragrance. Walk in love. John 13, 35. Let's look at that. Now, most people don't know this. The 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, and 17th chapters of John are in the middle of the night in the covenant meal. And Jesus. And of course, John records things in that meal. Some have called it the Last Supper. It's, it, it's more, it, it's, well, that kind of says it. But, but it was the covenant meal. When you take communion, you should see yourself there. I've learned to take communion. It says as often as you do this. And I do it a lot. Sometimes I have the time where I just take a lot of time at it. And I somehow just go there and I'm right there in that room. And there's John on the right hand of Jesus leaned up against him. And, it, and somehow I'm just right there. And... Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus said it right here in that covenant meal. 13, 35. 34, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. In Mark 5, 19, Jesus had compassion on that man. And then that man left and preached compassion. And it worked. Now, I will show you this in closing. Praise God. First chapter of Isaiah. Eighteenth verse. You really need to read all the way down through this. Fifteenth verse, when you spread forth your hands in prayer, imploring help, I will hide my eyes from you. Even though you make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. Wash yourselves. Make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Relieve the oppressed and correct the oppressor. Defend the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come, the widow. Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. And though they are red like crimson, they shall be like wool. And if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. That's what love does, because he's so good. How do you have a vision for your future when you just need to get through today? When the dreams you once had seem out of reach, is there a way to rebuild? The Bible says that God has only good plans for you, that His goodness and mercy are coming after you. It's when you begin to understand His goodness that you can begin to receive it. 
Get the Goodness of God MP3 series by Gloria Copeland and grow your capacity to see the love, prosperity, healing, all the good things of God in your life. God is good. There's not anything that is more faith building than to know the Father and to know His goodness. When it seems like the world around you is being torn apart, you can remain firm in hope. Become a living, walking example of the love that God has poured out to mankind. As you join your faith in God's promises with steadfastness to stand on His Word, there's nothing that can stop His blessing from taking over your life. Order your free copy of The Goodness of God MP3 series by Gloria Copeland. The motivation of God's heart is His love for you. Receive all the benefits that God desires to pour out on you through His goodness. Go to kcm.org slash TV special or call 800-600-7395. Offer good for 60 days. If you're outside the U.S., shipping charges may apply. Contact your regional office for more information. We have heard so many testimonies from people that shared how 2020 was their best year in so many ways. Now, I know for others it was very hard and many people are still recovering, but no matter what you've experienced, faith in God and in His Word can turn it around and bring even greater success. Now, Gloria Copeland's audio teaching is a great resource to help you. It's called The Goodness of God and it's free. All you have to do is request your copy and we'll send it to you. Now, you may know that God is good, but every time you hear the Word, your faith grows. You receive higher revelation of just how great His goodness is. And it's out of His goodness that He desires to bless you and to heal you and to protect you. And as you learn how to walk as a living demonstration of God's love, you become a witness to other people of His goodness. And there is huge benefit, great benefit to renewing your mind to the goodness of God. It gives you peace in your life, confidence, rest, even hope for the future. So you can request your free package as an MP3 disc or as a digital download on kcm.org. The Believer's Voice of Victory magazine is KCM's free monthly publication. It was first printed in 1973, and today it's being sent to partners and friends of this ministry all over the world. And every issue is filled with powerful tools that are all there to help you grow spiritually. And in this magazine, you're going to read articles by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland, other ministry leaders. You're going to hear real life stories from partners all over the world. So you can request a subscription, have the BVO... Uh, BVOV magazine mailed directly to you, or you can read the interactive version online at kcm.org. And of course, both versions can be shared with family and can be shared with friends. Thanks so much for joining us today, everybody. We'll see you again next time. Until then, remember, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. To download or request a free copy of today's broadcast, go to kcm.org. 2021 is the year of the local church, a year of divine healing, divine health, divine prosperity, and divine recovery.